Hey guys, today we're going to tie <laughs> perch fly, offset fly. Let me just remove this piece here. A little bit different of what you've probably seen so far. Um, I always like to have a little bit of keel weight on my uh, perch flies. Doesn't have to be too much. This is a uh, lead free wire. So uh, Use what you want, just get a little bit of weight to it, just get it around there, and then you can just close it together. And uh, I really, I just secured with some super glue, there's not much pressure on it, and uh, it will do the trick. As soon as this lead is in, if you want, you can go with a little bit of thread above the super glue, just make a knot into the wet glue. And there's no need to uh, secure it anymore, cut it short, and now it really is uh, in place. So, let's start to tie the fly. And uh, what we do is uh, again take a little bit of super glue on the, uh, on the shank there, that was a little bit much. So we just take a little bit of paper as well to uh, just get the uh, rest of the glue away and uh, cut the thread of course. So this is a really small place of course to, uh, to tie a fly on and uh, usually the most important thing is that if you tie a fly on an offset hook keep the uh, hook point clear because all the material which is lying above the hook point is preventing your hook point to penetrate the fish and if you cover it with a lot of material with dubbing with niad with whatever fibers um, you definitely hook less fish and uh, the frustration level is uh, definitely growing so we tie a ep fly which is really rare on offset hook i actually haven't seen any to be honest but there are probably a few around um, however, it is important that we don't tie too much material above the hook point as I said before. So we start with a quite short edge and it's not over exceeding here the, the hook so it can't really get stuck in it and we tie it on the bottom side of the, uh, of the fly which is just really, this is just the core of the fly and this is holding the rest material in place and uh, of course we have now a little bit of the uh, the super glue of the wet super glue there uh, on the bottom but uh, not, not a big problem what we do then is we we split the AP material we use to uh, the left and the right and just fold it back and just pinch it with your fingers and then you really just tie on top of it again and now near the belly part is already nearly done and you can see the material is lying now on the sides of, of the hook point so it really stays clear um, and we cut this into shape let's say we want to have that length and um, on the uh, upper bit we tie inch chartreuse so uh, take clumps of chartreuse not too much as we really we don't want to uh, yeah, we don't want to put too much material on top of the hook point and now we really have to tie it on top. But I'll show you what will happen later. Because the hook point is setting above the hook eye quite a bit. We actually have a small spot, like a millimeter maybe, that we can actually tie on top and it will stay still lay below the hook point and uh, won't really decrease our hook set. So that's definitely a good thing. So when you have this in the water and this gets gets wet and stretched. Um, you see here the material is just laying below the hook point and we can still hook the fish quite good. And what is important that we fold, when we fold the material back usually I tie it then three quarters of the fly and then I cut a nice taper. But this time we have the hook point here so we cut it just on the hook point so it really can't tangle into it and if we have it now it really it can't reach the hook point. And when we cut it in shape later on the material on top, it really can't get tangled in it and uh, it really properly hooks all the fish that take the fly. And this is quite a nice advantage if you, if you fish a offset EP fly. And uh, then of course you can fish it really nice and slow 
uh, close to the bottom without getting stuck or without collecting too much leaves and uh, woods which is lying around on the on the ground. However, we tie a little bit shorter bit of the uh, white EP on the on the uh, belly side. And this is actually not white; it's uh, I think baitfish belly the color. It's um, EP sculptor fly, so we have this little flesh material in it, and it really looks nice in the water. A little bit like. Uh, yeah, with every strip, like there's the scales of a fish reflecting in the sun. And we just fold it back and really just tie on top of it, make a knot in here, and just cut the thread. Easy as that. Secure it with a good amount of super glue. And now, first thing I always do with the EP flies is I put the eyes on because um, when you have the eyes on, we can actually see how we have to taper our fly with the scissors. If you cut it before putting eyes on, chances are quite high that you make a big mess. So I'm um, using really small eyes. I think these are four or five millimeter uh, eyes from fly scene. Really nice eyes, quite durable. And um, I don't use any special glue or so. I just really use, on the EP it works really well, the Gulf Minute Man, as it's a, uh, just press them into here and uh, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful with your fingers that you don't get stuck in it but uh, you can get them quite easy and fast onto your fly and it, they last with, with the golf there. It wouldn't be my first uh, choice in doing pike streamers but with the EP uh, if you do uh, the normal 3D ice on it it really holds nice with the um, with the Minuteman if you don't get it stuck to your fingers. Let's take a new eye because when you get it stuck to your fingers now maybe you just press it in place with the dubbing needle. and you get stuck with your fingers on it and you lose the shine of the ice and it's probably not a problem to the fly but I just don't like it. So now we have the fly, what we do is we uh, take a cat brush or just any brush to or comb to, uh, to brush out your fly a bit and you see that we have a long tail and we have these short head pots and what you do now with the scissors you really just cut it from the rear in a, in a V shape, you cut it like that so you get a straight line to the head. So I'm gonna try to show you that on the camera. It's quite, quite difficult to show that, but uh, maybe we'll manage. Let's see. So I'll just brush it out on my legs for a second. That's how it looks. Oh, it's completely on the video. And really, we just cut it in a straight line, so you don't have this. Uh, this edge anymore from, from the head section and the same uh, same thing we do on the belly side we cut it in an angle we just touching here the the um, the hook shank and uh, that really is the the yeah that will be close to the shape of our fly I'll put it now in the water it will probably look already quite good because then the fire is getting attached to it but we just want to have a little bit less material in the head section. So we lift this up with our two fingers a bit. And we just cut it in a 45 degree angle and then just always round the edges a bit. Like that. I hope you can see that. Just slowly getting to a, to a fly shape here. And I always here this piece in the be beginning is quite hard to cut so I cut it um, against the fibers with an aggressive cut uh, makes it a little bit easier to cut it in shape and then we really just cut around the hook shake uh, hook, hook shank and uh, you can always really just lift the fibers up with your fingers because it's quite tough to to uh, cut inside the uh, the hook shank and then you just 
lift it up with your fingers and then you have, can just cut above it and when you fold it back it really folds nicely around the uh, around the hook maybe don't use your best scissors for it as there are really sometimes occasions that you cut into the steel and no scissors really likes that and the same thing we do on the upper layer just cut it into shape Get it out of your sight a bit. So just do a little bit of fine tuning um, outside of the camera because it's quite tough to uh, cut it on top of here. But what you see now is the fibers here in the front, they're really, really short. They don't even touch the hook point. So there's no chance that they get tangled in the hook and the, all the other fibers are lying underneath. So they also can't tangle. What can happen, of course, if you cast it, that the tail is coming up and when it's going down again, it will get tangled and therefore we just put a little bit of, of, of the flexman here onto the fly. Just uh, put it in your fingers and then you just, uh, just uh, get it into the material a bit. And this now really helps to your material to, to, uh, to lock the, um, the tail in position and uh, we, we get a little bit the shape of yeah, let's say of, of a flat wing uh, uh, head where you really where you push the um, the feather on top of it. But uh, as you see now, is that the head really pushes the material down a bit, and now it really just stays. I hope you can see that like that. It stays underneath the hook point, and we now have a really good hooking ratio, and. Uh, we can fish this EP fly, as I said before, really, really slow over the bottom. We are not collecting any dirt on it. And uh, yeah, I really like the fly. It was quite successful the uh, last times. So um, give that a go, have a try and uh, success with it. Thanks for watching.